God is a good God. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, he is. Nobody can tell us any different. How many were not with us uh, yesterday morning when I, when I ministered? Let me see. Okay. Okay. Quite, oh, boy. Quite a few. Uh, well, we covered some things. I'll, I'll review just a little bit. Go to Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans chapter 10. Thank you, sir. Romans 10, we're talking about faith's source, the source of faith in God. And uh, you want to watch that you think you already know the answer to that. <laughs> if uh, in our group, Word and faith bunch. If you say, how do you get faith? There you go. I mean, did you hear that? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I mean, almost everybody in the house. <laughs> but you've got to watch about things you think you know. Yes. Because there can be a problem in it and you won't even look at it because you think you already know it. In Romans 10 and 13, he said, whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? That's a question. What's the answer? They can't. They won't. Won't well, what? They won't. You're not going to call on or act on something you don't believe. That's not going to happen. And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? Now, see, this, this ties directly in with verse 17 as to how faith comes. How will they believe in him? How will they believe if they haven't heard? What's the answer? You cannot believe what you haven't heard. I want you to say it out loud. You cannot, you cannot believe, believe what, you heard. what you haven't heard. I want you to say it with me three more times. You cannot believe what you haven't heard. Say it again. You cannot believe what you haven't heard. You You cannot believe. You cannot. Now you can try, but it won't be real faith. It'll be pretend faith. It'll be presumption. It'll be assumption. You can't believe before you've heard. You can't believe what you haven't heard. And how will they hear without a preacher? Now, we, we got into this a little bit yesterday, but uh, it, he didn't say how uh, will they hear without a Bible. Right. You might say, well, it, you know, same thing. No, it's not the same thing. No, it's not. <laughs> preacher and a Bible is not the same thing. This is a Bible. This is a preacher. Right. Not the same thing. Now, you can't, have, you can't have the preacher without the Bible. But he didn't say, how will they hear without a Bible? Why? And this, this brings us, this is all leading up to that 17th verse. What's the difference between getting faith by reading your Bible or getting faith by hearing preaching? What's, what's, what's the difference? Anointing. Yes, anointing. Anointing. First John says it's the anointing that teaches. Yes. It's the anointing. Yes. That's why 
you and I both, there have been times we have read scriptures many, many times and then hear somebody anointed to teach and preach on it and see things you've never seen before, hear things you've never heard before and it's right there. Why didn't you see it when you read it? You need a preacher. We need preachers. We need, we need them. God has ordained that it be this way. So it's not just through the mechanics of reading or hearing the anointing is a primary factor yes. in getting faith. Yes. Amen. I said in getting faith. Yes. Keep reading. I want to skip on down to the, the 17th verse. Then he says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now that's King James. And really, I don't know that it's, it's the most accurate on this last word. Because the last word of that phrase is not the word commonly translated for God. It's the word translated for Christ. It's translated hundreds of times in the New Testament. Christ, not God. And the word for word is the word rhema. So you can say it like this, faith comes by what? Hearing. hearing. But it's a specific kind of hearing. Hearing by the rhema Christos, the anointed spoken utterance. You can't, we said it already, you can't believe what you haven't heard. Now I asked uh, Monday, I'll ask again, don't raise your hand, just, just think about what we're saying. Have you ever uh, confessed something that didn't come to pass? Just look straight ahead, don't, don't raise your hand, just, <laughs> just, you can just look a little bitty slight nod, knowingly. Uh, <laughs> have you ever prayed a prayer that you really wanted to happen and it didn't happen. Hmm? Hmm? Confessed and declared things the best you knew and it did not come to pass. Yeah. So what's up with that? I mean, what's, what's that about? Well, in 1 Timothy, we saw this yesterday. Look at it again. I'll, I'll just read it to you. He's, he, he's talked about in 1 Timothy 4, 5, the end of the commandment is love out of a pure heart, a good conscience, and faith unfeigned. Everybody say faith unfeigned. Faith unfeigned. Second Timothy, he refers to it again, and he talks about Timothy. He said, I call to remembrance, 2 Timothy 1, 5, the unfeigned faith that is in you, it dwelt first in your grandmother and then in your mother, and I'm persuaded it's in you too. What's in you? Unfeigned faith. What is unfeigned? Well, un is not. What is feign? Feign is pretend. 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 Pretending is a big problem in the church. I said pretending is a big problem. God is truth itself. The Word is the Word of truth. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the true. And he won't have anything to do with anything that is the least bit pretentious or untrue or fake or phony or false. He won't have anything to do with that. And so if we participate or yield to some of that, we do it without him. And without him, prayers don't get answered. Without him, confessions don't come to pass. Without him, it doesn't work. 
pretending. And then we looked at uh, uh, the, the first generation of Israelites that God delivered out of uh, Egypt on yesterday. And, and we saw that they were contrary. The, the Bible calls them stiff-necked. And, and we see it in that he would tell them to do something and they wouldn't do it. And then he'd say, don't do it, and then they would do it. Yeah. And this kept happening time after time after time. And in, in, in the latter part of that experience, 10 times in a row, and the last time he said, go into the promised land. And they said, we can't and we won't. And they tried to appoint somebody to take them back into Egypt. And he said, okay, I'm going to do what you said. You've been saying you're going to die out in here. So that's what's going to happen. Turn yourself around, get back in the wilderness. He was fed up with them. We don't ever want to do that. No. Right? No. And so then what did they say? No, we're here. We're going. We're going into promised land and, and we're sorry. We repent, but we're going. We're going. And Moses said, don't go. The Lord's not with you. And they said, no, we're going. The Lord has given us the land and we're here and we're going. And like we said, what, what is pretend faith? It looks like faith. Yep. It sounds like faith to people who don't know. Yep. But you cannot have faith, you can't believe, unless you hear. Mm -hmm. Your faith is, you can only have faith in what you've heard. Let me give you a little personal example. I mean, if you say, well, uh, I think Brother Keith is, is a pretty good guy and uh, I hurt my foot and I'm just going to believe that Brother Keith comes and cuts my grass. <laughs> I believe Brother Keith's a nice guy. I don't think that he thinks he's too good to do that and he looks able-bodied to me. I think he could do it. Might even bring a lawnmower. I don't know. But I am believing and confess. <laughs> Somebody already said that, that's not going to work. How do you know? Because all things are possible to him that believes. Huh? True or not? All things are possible to him that believes. All things? Well, then why can't you believe that I'll come cut your grass? <laughs> How will they believe if they haven't heard? Faith in God can only be based on what you've heard from Him. Faith in me can only be based on what you've heard from me. And what we should immediately think if somebody says, well, I'm going to believe that Brother Keith come cuts my grass. You should immediately think, based on what? Yeah. Based on what? Because anybody remember Hebrews 11, 1? What is faith? Now faith is the what? Substance. Substance. Stop right there. Substance. Now that word substance actually is the King James word too. It, 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 it has the idea of that which lies under. It refers to something that's foundation that you stand on. Faith is the foundation of things hoped for and that, that's, that word means expect. So faith is the foundation for expectation. But you got to back up before that. Hearing is the foundation for faith. Yeah. I said hearing is the foundation for faith, and faith is the foundation for expecting. You say, well, I'm expecting Brother Keith to come cut my grass. Based on what? Do you know Brother Keith? <laughs> right? Have you talked to Brother Keith? Right? What did he say? Exactly what did he say? <laughs> Come on, can y'all see this? 
This is where folks are missing it. This is why people are making confessions and it's not coming to pass. Yes. This is why people are praying prayers and it's not happening. Wouldn't it be presumptuous for you to presume that I'm going to come cut your grass and you hadn't even talked to me about it? That's presumptuous, isn't it? Not good. And yet this is happening with God on a regular basis. People just decide what they want to happen and they learned a few faith principles and so they start saying it or they start claiming it but they never even talk to the Lord about it. And faith comes by hearing. hearing. And not just the sounds bouncing off your ears because the Lord would tell people, him that has ears to hear, let him hear. So there is a hearing where you don't hear. And so the hearing he's talking, that's why he went into sp the Spirit of God, inspired specific words. The hearing that causes faith to come is the anointed rhema. And when you get that, when you hear from God, when he speaks to you about the situation, now faith is right there with it. Faith comes with that word, and now you make your confession. Now it comes to pass. Are y'all okay or not? Some people don't, don't like that. They're like, you mean I got to hear from God about every situation? <laughs> uh huh. Actually, going to have to pray some. <laughs> Woo. Actually, going to have to pray some. And <laughs> you should see some of the looks I'm getting across the crowd. You're going to have to pray some. Go with me, if you would, to the gospel account. Hallelujah. Matthew 14. What will the truth do for you? It, it'll, it'll make you free. And it is wonderful to find out why things hadn't been working. I mean, it's wonderful. Because then you realize, okay, all I got to do is do this now, and it's going to start working. It's wonderful. Wonderful. In Matthew 14, this is the account where Jesus sent the disciples over the, the lake and the storm rose up and he comes to them in the night, in the dark, walking on the water. Whoo! They saw him, it scared them. <laughs> and Peter, he said, it's me, don't be afraid. And, and uh, you got to remember, it's dark and and the winds splash, the waves are splashing, the winds blowing, and, and so Peter says, "If that's you, tell me to come on out there." Yep. And Jesus said, "Come." Mm -hmm. Let's just stop right here. We we know Peter got out of the boat and actually started walking on the water. Could he have done that without hearing the word "come"? from Jesus. No, 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 that's a good one. Could he have done that? No. Could he have said, all things are possible to him that believes? <laughs> I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We must differentiate between reasoning yes. and revelation. Yes. We must, we must learn to. 
the, well, the Lord said this, so why can't I do this? And I think I'll just do this. See, that's reasoning. You can, you can jump to a conclusion and never have communed with God about it, never ask him about it, and never heard from him about it. Well, it says this, so it must mean this, so I think I could do this. So here we go. Mm -mm. That's how, that's why people say things and it doesn't happen. People pray things and it didn't come to pass. So would you agree with me, Peter could not have walked on the water without that rhema Christos. Are y'all with me or not? That, that rhema Christos, this definitely was a spoken utterance. How many believe it was anointed? It was obviously anointed because the power of it held his feet above the water. And we know he couldn't have done it without that word because the moment he took his eyes off of Jesus and the word, he started sinking. He couldn't have done it without the rhema Christos. He couldn't have done it without that anointed utterance from Jesus to him. Yes. But when the Lord said, this one word, when he said, come, and Peter heard that, faith came. Amen. Oh, come on, can you see that? Yeah, yeah. That's why he got out of the boat, because when the Lord told him, come, yep. and like what Brother Bill was just preaching, when, when, when he heard that word, come, it produced a seeing, uh, he could see himself doing it. Yeah. And so he ups and just comes right out of the boat yep. and puts his foot on the H2O yeah. and it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. Yeah. Miracles. And this is the key to miracles. Yes, sir. That's a big word. I said the. I used the article. Yeah. The key. What do you mean? The first miracle in Jesus' ministry was the turning of water into wine at the wedding feast, and you remember what his mother said to him? What? Huh? How do you get, how did they get a miracle? How'd Peter get a miracle? How do you get a, whatever? Whatever? Pops into your head? No, no, no. Whatever somebody prophesied to you. No, no, no. Whatever he said to you, do it, do it, and then watch out. Here, here, here comes the power to confirm the word. Hey. Go to Mark 14. Oh, you're already there? <laughs> That was Matthew 14, wasn't it? No, Mark, I want you to go to now. Mark 14. Y'all trying to straighten me out? <laughs> what, what Brother Bill say? Let me preach this. Is that what he said? That's what he told me. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> What's it? No, I'm preaching this, okay. <laughs> With the Lord's help, I am. Uh, Mark 14. Right before Jesus went to the cross, he said to them, if you look at, at Mark 14 and uh, 27, Jesus said to them, uh, all you, talking about his 12, and all of you will be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I'll smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. But after I'm risen, I'll go before you to Galilee. Verse 29. Are you here? Yeah. Peter said, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Now, I know you've read the rest of the story, so you already, you know, your, your view of it's already set. 
but try to back up before you knew the rest of the story. If you were just there and you heard Peter get up and say, no, no, no. Now, he, we'd say this this way today. In Jesus' name, I will not. <laughs> I will not. I confess. I will never forsake you. <laughs> Y'all are quiet. <laughs> Actually, if you read... Uh, Matthew's account and, and the other, uh, Luke's account rather. He said, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both into prison and to death. Yep. Is he saying, I'm committed. Yep. That's what I'm there. Yep. That's what he's saying. That sounds like us. Mm. Mm. It is a bold, positive mm -hmm. confession. Huh? Yeah. Does it or not? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, certainly, certainly doesn't sound like us to say, "Oh, I don't know if I can make it." Oh, I don't, I don't guess. I, 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 yeah, I guess so. I'm, I'm just a, just a poor, you know, excuse of a Christian. I, I don't doubt it. <laughs> no. See, you got to remember, Jesus has already. He has been uh, on the road with Jesus for three plus years, and. You think they hadn't learned something about confession mm -hmm. and faith? Mm -hmm. They've been corrected numerous times. I mean, yeah. But look at the next thing the Lord says to him. And Jesus said to him, verse 30, that's a great confession, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Hold on to it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Peter, today, even tonight, before the, the rooster crows twice, you'll deny me three times. Now get verse 31. Verse 31, what, what did Peter say? He what? <laughs> the King James says he spoke the more vehemently, if I should die with you, I will not deny you in any wise. And likewise, the rest of the 12, they chimed in and said, that's right. That's right, us too. <laughs> NIV said that vehemently is a King James word. The NIV says he insisted emphatically. And the, the New American says he kept saying repeatedly. Sounds like us. Yeah. Confess it again. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. He kept on saying it insistently. Yeah. Yeah. What? I will not deny you. I will not. I will not. What's wrong with this? Huh? I said, what's wrong with this? You cannot have faith except based on what you have heard. So what's Peter's faith based in? That he's not going to do it when the Lord just told him that he was. What's his faith based in? It's presumption. Come on, are y'all with me? Yeah. It's presumption. Presumption. Did, did Peter have to have the word come to have the faith to walk on the water? Yeah. Had to. Had to. So if he's going to have faith now at this hour when they come and take Jesus away and, and experience all of that mock trial and crucifixion, if Peter's going to be strong and stand and not, not fall, what's he going to stand on? Not good intentions. Good intentions won't hold you in the storm. No matter how adamantly you affirm them or confess them. 
You, you got to come back to what did the Lord say to me about this? What did he say? And if you say, well, I don't know, well, then you're not ready to make bold confessions. Except to confess, I'm going to hear from him. <laughs> He'll show me what to do. But you're not ready to make adamant confessions. We have a perfect example of it right here. So, can you see, and I don't, I don't think Peter meant this maliciously. I think he fully intended to die with the Lord that night if that's what he took. You know it did because when it all started going down, he whips out his blade. Is that right? And he's not a soldier. He's a fisherman, but he goes for it. And he cut the guy's ear off, and I don't think he was aiming for his ear. I think he was trying to take his head off, but he's not a soldier. <laughs> and the Lord had to tell him, put your blade up, man. Put your blade up. You live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. And that's, that's what Peter didn't foresee. And that's what the rest of the guys, what shook them so bad, they never believed Jesus would let them take him. They just did not believe that would happen. They had seen him when they tried to get him just walked through the crowd like nothing was wrong. They had seen multiple situations and they were convinced he's the Messiah. He's the Christ. Nobody can take him. And Jesus himself said that they can't take me. Uh, and nobody takes my life from me. I lay it down. And the Father's given me commandment to take it up again. Now just stop right here. How can Jesus have faith that he'll raise from the dead? Because the Father has told him. Oh, come on. Can you see that or not? The Father has told him. On the Mount of Transfiguration, that's what Moses and Elijah, that's the conversation they had. They talked to him about what was about to happen in his death, his crucifixion and death and burial and resurrection. These are guys that lived on the planet centuries ago and they're having a conversation with Jesus. So nothing that happened surprised Jesus. And it's not because he's, he's walking and operating in omniscience as God. It's because God had revealed it to him and shown him every piece of it and so he's, faith is in him. And he can let them do this to him, like Brother Bill was preaching about, because he could see the end. Why could he see the end? He didn't just imagine it on his own. The word the Father gave him produced it and brought to faith. Hallelujah. So, if you say, I'm, conf well, I'm moving ahead of myself a little bit. Uh, when, a little bit later, after Peter said this and all the other guys chimed in and said, oh, no, 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 we will never, that's one thing that will never happen, is us denying you. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we'll die with you if we have to. We'll go to jail, we'll, but, but we will never deny you. Yeah. That ain't going to happen. And the Lord said, yeah, for the night's over. Peter, you, the most vocal one about it, you're going to do it three times. And Peter doubled down. <laughs> Didn't he own his confession and was even more insistent, wrong move. I said wrong move. You can't separate faith from humility. You can't separate faith from submission. And this is one of the biggest reasons people don't submit is a lack of faith. They, they are too afraid to trust God to work the situation out 
they think they have to take it into their own hands. Yes. So they won't submit and trust him. But fa a big part of faith is submission. Submission. Jesus, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience. Is that right? By the things that he suffered in submission to the Father. And, and you listen to his faith in this prayer right here in this same passage. When, when Right after this, they went into the garden and prayed. And Jesus told Peter and James and John and the other guys, he said, watch with me. He said, this, this thing's heavy. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. This, this thing's heavy on me. And uh, watch with me. Stay awake, watch with me, and pray. Now let's just stop right here. Have they heard from the Lord? Yes, sir. What can they have faith to do? They can have faith to stay awake and watch and pray. But what were they doing instead? Making bold confessions and sleeping. <laughs> would be fun if it wasn't so close to home, huh? I mean, it's, woo. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you remember he came back, he prayed, Father, everything's possible with you. And if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Is Jesus wanting to believe not to have to go through with this? Then he comes back and says, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. What does that mean? At that moment, he's looking this in the face and personally, he don't want to do it. Not my will. You can't say that unless, right? And, you, and he, as horrible as the scourging and the spitting and the mocking and the nailing to the cross, as horrible as that was, that wasn't even close to the worst part of this. It wasn't even close. Isaiah in the spirit saw he recorded it. He said his visage was more marred than any man. Well, that's not true naturally, physically. There have been people that have been mutilated and every other kind of thing. No, nah, he's seeing in the spirit. Why? He became sin with the sin of all mankind, past, present, and future, all of that converged on his holy, sinless, spotless soul and being, and then the judgment of God fell on him, and they cried out, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's what he's praying about. That's why blood and sweat's coming out of his pores. He, do, do you understand? He's not just confessing, I'm not going to have to go through with this. Why? You can't believe what you haven't heard. You can't have faith for God to do in your situation what you haven't heard him tell you. And so, then he gets up and he comes back and, and Peter and James and John laying there sound asleep and he says, what? Get up. Can't you watch with me? He, he, he's feeling it. He wants some help. He wants some, somebody around him. And he said, Peter, prior to this, he said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you What's that sift, sifting separates things? And, and, and the enemy is trying to separate Peter's faith from him. Because that's the next thing he said, I've prayed for you. 
that your faith fail not. And he said, what? He said, this, your spirit's willing. That's where the good confessions are coming from. Can you see that? I'm not going to do it. I, I will not fail you, Lord. I'm with you. I'm with you. Your spirit's willing, but your flesh is, is weak. You, you need to watch and pray so you don't enter into temptation. Temptation to what? Temptation to deny him the things that, that followed up and happened. But what was Peter doing? And not knocking Peter. Peter, I got much respect for you, sir. <laughs> but there's reasons why this is here. What's Peter doing? Peter is making bold confessions, different from what the Lord said to him. He's overconfident and sleeping. When he should have been fervently, earnestly praying about this instead of making bold confessions. The Lord deals with you to pray more about this. Making confessions are not going to cut it. Making confessions are not going to take the place of praying and seeking God to get the word from him about the situation. And see, the flesh is lazy. And the flesh is weak. And the flesh just wants to grab a verse out of the blue and go, that looks close enough. We'll confess that. And the Spirit of God is saying, no, get yourself back in here and, and pray. Because the Lord's trying to say something else to you about this. And you go, no, I got it. I just confessed it. We're fine. Come on, let's go shopping. That's how you say things and they don't come to pass. Are y'all okay? Hallelujah. We still friends? Yes. Yeah, good, good, okay. <laughs> Go to Hebrews 11th chapter. I'll give you a little bit more and then we'll, we'll wind up. By the grace of the Lord I, and, and Copeland's and the ministry, I get to be with you again, I think, tomorrow. So uh, we don't have to do it all today. Nope. This is a great meeting. I said, this is a great meeting. Yes, oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Aren't we thankful? Yes. I mean, with everything that happened, you know, Come last up. year, Come on. look at us. Look Come at on. us. Come on. Thank Come on. God. We're here. We're, we're free. We're glory to God. No, nobody restricting us and telling us what we can and can't preach and can and can't believe and can and can't do. We're, we're free in the Lord and we're free in Fort Worth, Texas. Should be thankful, 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 thankful. Not take it for granted. Fresh out of this other stuff, we shouldn't be taking it for granted. We, we know the difference. Hebrews 11, did you find that great Heroes Hall of Fame of Faith. Well, in this great book, this chapter, it, uh, it not only tells you what to do to have great faith, it shows you what not to do. <laughs> it shows you very clearly what feigned faith is. So you can contrast it. What pretend faith. Now again, Pretend faith is going to be based on pretend hearing. Pretending you've heard from God when you hadn't. Pretending you're clear on it when you're not. Pretending you've got direction when you don't. How many are clear on what happened with Peter? When the Lord looks at you and says, this is an issue. You need to be praying about this. Is it time to make bold confessions and ignore what he told you? If he says, watch and pray, then is it okay to say, no, in Jesus' name, we're going to be fine. We're going to be good. The Lord didn't tell you to confess it. He said, pray. Is that right? Pray. 
It ain't time to make bold confessions. It's time to pray because there's some things that need to change. You need to see some things, need to hear some things. Then you get what to make your confession on. And it can be very different than how you thought. Very different. We must not assume. We must not presume. Got to hear from him every day. I said we got to hear from him every day. There is no substitute for being led continually by the Holy Spirit. There is no substitute. I'm not talking about trying to hear voices and fall into trances. The Spirit of God bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God and a son of God. And, and, and yes, he'll speak things to you right out of the Word of God. Did you hear that word that, that, that Brother Kenneth talked about last night? About he'd get on that treadmill and he got that, that word out of Isaiah, I'll walk and won't faint. Yeah. Yeah. Sound like a rhema to me, man. Sound like an anointed rhema. Because that's what he did. Yeah. It's a big book. There's a lot of verses. And they're all good. Yep. But what's the Lord saying to you right now yeah. about this? That you, that's what you've got to have. You, Got to have it. Got to have it. Got to have it. And until you have it, don't be making bold confessions off the top of your head. Be seeking God. Seeking God. Is that right? Looking. Checking. Praying. Got to get it. And when you got it, you don't have to ask somebody, did I get it? Do you? When, when the Lord speaks the word to you, you don't have to say, is that it? No, you know it's it. You know it's it. When the Lord speaks it to you, you go, whoo, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. Now you make your confession. Yes, sir. Now you stand. Now you act. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hebrews 11. Boy, y'all are a good bunch to preach to. I tell you, man, whoo. Enjoyable. Hebrews 11, and I believe it's down here about verse, what is it, uh, 28. Through faith, Moses kept the Passover and sprinkling of blood, lest he, should be, he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. And by faith, everybody say by faith. By faith. Now, what do we know before we go any further? They had faith. They acted in faith. Mm -hmm. What did they have to have first? They had to have heard from God yes. about this. Yes. Or they couldn't have had faith to do it. That's right. That's right. By faith, uh, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, <laughs> a saying to do, Huh? What happened with them? <laughs> Tell me what, what feigned faith is. Looks like faith. Sounds like faith. But it ain't faith. It's not faith. faith. Real faith has to be based on something. It's got a foundation. Faith in God can only be based on what he told you. So back in, uh, go back to Exodus and the 14th chapter, I believe it is. And let's, let's break this down a little bit. The, uh, oh, what was it? The Amplified says about that. It said, by faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as though by dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, come on, did you hear that or not? They tried to do the same thing. They were swallowed up by the sea and drowned. Two very different outcomes. And yet they both did the same things. Very different outcomes. Well, in Exodus 14, when... Uh, the people had come out 
through all the signs and wonders and they're down to the Red Sea and Pharaoh he decided, yeah, I can't let them go and got all his hundreds of chariots. I mean, he got his whole army and, 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 and brought them out there and uh, here is uh, Pharaoh and his, his, his host closing in on them and the, he's in the back and the Red Sea's in the front. This is the proverbial between the rock and the hard place. <laughs> Drown or get stabbed. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's looking bad either way you go. And uh, so in Exodus 14 and 15, the Lord said to Moses, I'll just, just stop right there. Huh? See, we have seen these phrases so many times that we're, you know, it's easy to overlook them. But is the Bible full of the Lord said, and the Lord said, and the Lord spoke to Moses, and the Lord spoke to Elijah, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, and the Lord said. Why? Because there couldn't have been any faith unless there was first the Lord said. Because that's when the faith comes. It's when he says, that's when the faith comes. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying to me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. One translation says, forward march. Move. Get going. Is that a word from the Lord? Is that a, that's a word from the Lord. He told his people, go. And so Moses stretched out his, his rod, you know, and that, that wind blew. It blew all night long. Strong, cold wind, I guess. Pushed the water up, just keep pushing it up, and it said it was congealed. So it froze it. And think about this. In a few hours... Something that's been a seabed for how long is dry. That's a win. And uh, the Lord told his people, go. So can they have faith to go? I said, can they have, it's just like that word, come. Can they have faith to go? And they did. That's what the Hebrew said, by faith. They passed through the Red Sea on dry ground. And they made it all the way through. Man, that was an experience. Looking up at this giant wall of water. I, I expect it was kind of quiet. <laughs> Keep moving, don't stop. Keep moving. <laughs> Could probably see some fish on the other side of that, like an aquarium. You go, Keep moving. Move, move, move. Don't stop. <laughs> and then Pharaoh and all his hosts roll up on this, and it's still, the, still standing just like that, still dry. And their thought was, if they can do it, if they can do it, we can do it. And so they launched. And they got about halfway in there and they heard cracking sounds. <laughs> cracking sounds. And then water spraying out. And then it just opened up and the scripture said they sank like lead. They got all their armor on. They got all their chariots and stuff and not a one escaped. Not a one. Why? If you didn't know, if you didn't know what was going on and you hadn't read the story and you saw the Israelites get there and they hesitated and then you heard, go! And they all moved. Now I went across. And then Pharaoh and all his bunch roll up. 
And I'm sure everybody's thinking, surely we're going to stop, right? I mean, <laughs> you got to remember what they've already been through with all those plagues. No, I mean, they, these are not people that don't believe in the supernatural. They, they know it. And then you hear the command, go! If you didn't know the story, the outcome, you would think, looks like the same thing. Right? And so they roll off into there. Looks like they're doing the same thing. What's the problem? Come on, help me out. What's the problem? What's the problem? What did the Lord tell his people? Go. What did the Lord tell Pharaoh? Let my people go. <laughs> is, is that the same thing? Almost the same thing. I mean, both of, the, both of them got go in it. Huh? What's the only thing Pharaoh and his people could have had faith in God for? The only thing they could have had faith in God would be to let them, now you might say, well, why would that require faith? Well, the very reason that they're chasing them is because they realized after they left, their economy is built on their slave labor and they can't see them surviving. They think they have to have them. But if God said, let them go, they could have trusted that he would have took care of them and they would have been okay without them. Yeah. Come on, can you see that? Because faith came, well, the Pharaoh never knew it, but he, he drowned out there, you know, but faith came when the Lord said, let my people go, it was not just a bad word, a word of reproof. It's this is happening with you or without you. But if he could have cooperated, there would have been grace. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't. The Lord knew he wouldn't. And here's the thing. Why did they all drown that day? You talk about failure. This is so disastrous. We're still talking about it today. <laughs> Centuries later. You talk about a disaster. They all, every one of them, not a single survivor out of these thousands of people. What was the problem? Same thing that happened with Peter. Same thing that's happened with the Israelites that he told them go in the promised land and and then they decided they, they would, and then they wouldn't. Same thing has happened over and over and over again. They tried to act on the word the Lord gave to somebody else while ignoring the word he gave to them. Can you see that, church? They tried to act on the word the Lord gave Moses and the Lord gave the Israelites. He wasn't talking to them. Right? It's, you know, uh, in the scripture in Ephesians where it talks about husbands and wives. Husbands, uh, love your wives. Wives, submit yourself to your husbands. One thing you need to remember about this, when he says, uh, wives, husbands, I'm not talking to you. I'm serious. What he said to the wife about this, that's none of the husband's business. Hmm? So don't be bringing up to her what the Lord said to her about that. He wasn't talking to you. Husbands, listen to me. Never, ever tell your wife to submit to you. Never, ever. Is she supposed to? Yeah, but it's up to her. It's between her and God. What if she doesn't? Well, then she won't. <laughs> what if she never does? Well, then she never will. But the Lord told her that. He didn't tell you that. Well, let's, let, let's go to the other side. Husbands, 
Huh? Wives, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> right or not? That's right. Wives, I'm not talking to you. That's right. Husbands, love your wives Amen. like Christ loved the church. Wives, listen to me. Never tell your husband he's supposed to love you. Or he's not loving you like this. Or he's not. The Lord wasn't talking to you. Don't talk to him about loving you. Right? And husbands don't talk to her about submitting and you being the head. Because he, when he's talking to one, he wasn't talk. Did you notice how the scripture, it starts out with wives? He's addre- he addresses a specific group. Not everybody. Then he says husbands. Moses, go. (laughs) Pharaoh ain't hearing anything out there. He's already got his word, but he don't like that word. He don't like that word. (laughs) He didn't want that to be the word. And so he sees Moses got a word and man, it has worked amazing for Moses today. He has seen miracles he ain't never seen. He really likes the word that God gave Moses, so he said he's just going to use it. Come on, I take Moses' word. No, you won't. No, you won't. You will drown. (laughs) Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Master. Oh, bless your Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's the, what's the key here? What's the, what's the solution? Daily, hourly, moment by moment, communion, with the living Spirit of God. What did Jesus say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but what? By every, oh, somebody say every word. More, like Job said, I've esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. More than we need a meal is we need to hear from God every day. In every situation, every word. Can you see, uh, you know, man doesn't live by bread alone. Well, you're eating bread continuously. Some kind of food to keep you alive. But he's saying, you don't just live by that. The just shall live by faith, which means the just have to hear from God on a continual basis. Lift up your hands, say, Father God. Lord, Master Jesus. Thank you. For loving me. Thank you for your mercy in sparing me. Thank you for teaching me, helping me to grow up and know you and walk with you, closely with you, and hear from you every day in everything. And thank you for victory, victory. causing me to overcome, causing me to to triumph triumph. all the time. time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lift your hands. Lift your praises. Lift and give thanks to the Lord.